Hello everyone, I'm Pacific the Casual Gamer. Welcome back to another video. And in this video, we are gonna make a Dark Knight character in Oblivion. This is a tutorial for the Dark Knight. Now, I have my opinions on how a knight should go, and many of you have your opinions on how a knight should go. So, this is the Dark Knight. Share them in the thoughts. Share them in the thoughts below. Comment below. Share me your thoughts. My English is broken. Hello. Goodbye. Hello. Okay, it's, we're good. We're good. My English was broken. Go ahead and share your thoughts in the comments below on what you think of the Dark Knight. There we go. Okay, boom. Let's get into this. Dark Knight, your birth sign is going to be the warrior. You're going to have strength and endurance and combat. Your specialization is it's physical damage is basically the Dark Knight. Your skills are going to be heavy armor, blunt, block, armorer, conjuration, illusion, and marksman. Okay, those are your skills. Now let me explain how this character works. First of all, you pick a mace because generally speaking, I think in history, a sword is seen as a noble weapon and in Oblivion it is actually the same way. Now, how you can figure this out is the jailers carry maces and bandits carry blunt weapons. They don't actually usually carry swords. They always carry maces and axes and stuff like that. So. You're going to use basically a mace or a one-handed axe with this character with shield and heavy armor. Armor, of course, to repair stuff. Marksman, because a knight knows how to use a bow as well as their melee weapon, which would normally be a sword, but you're a dark knight, so you use the blunt weapon. Now, Conjuration and Illusion are interesting choices for me. Illusion, what I thought of when picking Illusion was the ability to strike fear into the hearts of someone, right? Restoration... And alteration, like you would normally pick with a normal knight, are the exact opposite. They keep you safe, they heal you, they make sure you're okay. Illusion scares someone. Now, Conjuration was an interesting one. I wanted a second evil magical thing for this character to do. Okay? And I kind of thought paladins... In normal games, paladins can summon stuff that are like angels and stuff. So I'm like, okay, Dark Knight, you sh should be able to conjure zombies and crap like that. That's something I would expect... A dark knight to do it's just that's pretty evil is summon evil things to do evil bidding for you now when you play this character first of all if you want to get the true experience be a freaking crime lord go kill everyone beat the crap out of everyone be a nuisance do whatever okay there's, i know there's a mod you can get where there's like a castle you can go save go get the castle because you're gonna need it okay now how you actually play this character is you basically tank hits and beat the crap out of someone with your blunt weapon Okay, that's the general gist of it. You have the bow for sticky situations, and you can also conjure something up to tank stuff or do damage, whichever one you prefer. I think with this class, since you have heavy armor and block, you should probably pick something that does a lot of damage and try to tank the shots for it. That, I think, would be the better strategy. Now, Illusion's an interesting one. You can use that to actually strike fear into the hearts of your enemies. Or, my favorite spell, which is the Rage spell, which... For some reason, if you cast Rage on a bandit, he immediately turns around and starts beating up the other bandits. So if you want to do that, do that with this character. But this character is kind of built kind of like, I guess, a Nightblade, where a Nightblade is basically a assassin that uses, instead of stealth, they use more of a chaotic approach to combat. This guy is chaotic approach. So you, you basically, when you play this, you set up everything in the beginning and let it all play out okay so you do your sneak attack damage whatever if you want to do that you cast all your spells your rages early and then you commence with the combat you try to get everything out basically think of this as if you were in a three if you're in a 1v3 situation in the arena in the first 10 seconds you make someone rage and you cast your skeleton or your flame nature knock or whatever and then the fight commences after that. You don't want to go in kind of scouting out the enemies. You just cast all your stuff. Pray to God it works. The bow is there in case... Uh, well, first of all, a knight knows how to use the bow. But it's in case you need ranged attacks. Every once in a while, you're going to need to do that. Okay, just because you're a melee fighter, a heavy armor fighter, does not mean that you're invincible. Okay, I fall into this trap all the time. Plus... If you're like me, you forget to repair your armor. It happens to me. It happens to a lot of people. You can also use your bow to launch silence arrows. 
that is what I think the main thing is with the bow for the Dark Knight is is silenced shots. You make it so people can't cast magic, or you even do paralyzing shots, or the rage shots, or fear shots, something to add to the chaos of the mess that you're already about to create with conjuration and rage spells and even fear spells in the beginning. So you just use the bow as an extension of those spells. You know, probably pick silence because conjuration and illusion, I'm pretty sure, don't govern silence. I think silence is a destruction spell. I don't remember. You guys can correct me in the comments below. But anyways, that is how the Dark Knight class goes in Oblivion. That's how I think it should go. Let me know how you think it should go in the comments below. Subscribe if you're new for more Oblivion videos. I'm Pacific the Casual Gamer. I suck just as bad as you do at video games, and I'll see you in the next episode, stream, or vlog of whatever I decide to make.